So, hi everyone, how's it going? Tim here, and uh, today I want to finally finish our um, deployment of the front end, right? So, we started doing that uh, in the last live stream, and then I was a bit sick, so I did an um, off topic video, and you know, now I feel quite much better, so we can get on with it and uh, fix everything up. So, let me uh, go to our project folder. That's actually not the terminal I want right now. I want the hyper terminal, right? Um, um, like, uh, if you are wondering why I'm using iTerm instead of hyperterm, is the problem is I have a few um, logging heavy apps, and uh, the hyperterm doesn't really work well with um, a lot of logs coming out immediately. So it, it just hangs on it. So that's why um, from time to time, sadly, I have to actually. Um, use uh, old iterm like native terminal right so but yeah okay so one thing i wanted to do is actually um let me see code read me md so i'm gonna i'm gonna do this and I, I wanted to move that thing from here because the build status is actually our um full build status right and it's now it's it's in the server part which is not quite correct so i'm gonna Oh, there's, there's an update. Um, okay, let me just commit that. Git commit, um, move build status to uh, general readme md. To, uh, let's call it top level. There you go, that's much better. Um, and let's uh, install that update, why not? Okay, so we need that. Uh, I don't need that anymore, so we can focus on actually uh, working with um, client side, right? Let's fire this up. All right, uh, so now I've got to tell us more updates. Come on. There you go. Um, reload, yes, please. Okay, uh, good. Now, uh, where we stopped last time, I think we fixed the unit test for the back end. We, uh, we started adding some plugins over here. So we added Uglify, we added loader optimizations, we extracted the CSS. Okay, um, so I can, I think it should be, yeah, there we go. Uh, and I need a back end, right? Uh, so let's go here and start the server. Um, let me think npm run wait what was the uh, I forgot npm run db star db create it was right docker let's see uh, there we go okay I don't really need the org brew mongo now I don't want to work um, org brew mongo yes there you go please kill that rm yes okay so now I only have one database good npm start here we got our server running. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, now, let's see. Okay, we got our thing compiled. Uh, 759 kilobytes JS, 120 kilobytes CSS. It's all good. Um, let's check that it actually works fine. Uh, that was not 8080. What was it? 3000, I think, right? Yeah, there you go. Okay, cool. Um, no errors, no nothing, I, I assume. I think last time we make, made sure of that, right? So now let's see what we can optimize because like 700 uh, kilobytes is still quite large, right? So first of all, we're using Lodash and I think there was a um, Webpack Lodash uh, plugin that allowed you to actually optimize um, uh, bah, 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 and basically only load the whatever parts of Lodash that uh, are actually required. There we go. So um, I'm going to stop it and I'm going to do yarn odd dev Lodash Webpack plugin. So yeah, we got all these loaders. Uh, it might be actually worth switching to the Babel preset env, but um, we'll see about that later on. Here we go. Query. Uh, so we got to add it to Babel. Okay. Oh, uh, wait. Is there a Babel Lodash plugin? Yeah, there is. Okay. Um, yarn odd dev babel loadash plugin. I don't remember if I had it already. I don't think so. Uh, da -da -da -da. Come on. Yeah, good. Okay. <coughs> Apologize. Okay. Uh, so first of all, we added to babel, uh, which means we put it over here, right? 
And then we have to add this uh, Lodash model replacement plugin uh, to our um, plugins here. So I'm going to put it over here, I guess. We're going to get const and uh, and then in plugins uh, here, I guess, right? Config. So when I want to do this for production once again, uh, whoop, that's a bit too many news. Um, there we go. Okay, let's see. Ta ta ta. Come on. Where's my? E? I know. I know it's there. I know it's there. <laughs> okay, let's see. That bug doesn't make sense. I, I'm sure I removed all the queries from the webpack config because we don't really have any queries. You only have options. Query? No, there's no queries. So I don't like. I guess it's it's maybe one of the modules that are uh, used by webpack. But I guess I guess we'll have to live with this deprecation warning for now. There you go. That trimmed what 60 kilobytes? Yeah, 70 kilobytes just because we added one more plugin. Right. So what else do we have? Um, I guess let's commit that. Um, so make sure that we only yes, there we go. That looks good. Git commit at law dash. Um, how do we put that law dash uh, web pack? No, no, not web pack load at Lodash optimization uh, plugins. Okay, and then let's see what else do we have package wise, we're using redux and we're using react. I'm using rxjs. Is there an rxjs plugin actually webpack rxjs optimizations. Um, let's, let's see if that's a thing. My zero bundles wait with webpack. Yeah, there we go. Da, 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 da. Uh, does it seem so like I mean, it's it, I really like the Lodash for the fact that you know, there's this plugin that actually um, only loads the required parts, I guess that won't really work for um, RxJS, because I think actually we re required the whole thing here, right? Because we did it. Yeah, we did that. So um, that won't work really. Okay. Um, Let's see, is there anything new on uh, React optimization? Um, I like, I, I mean, I think I've used the, what was it called? The, uh, yeah, React optimized preset, but I don't know, maybe there's something better. So let's see, preset, preset webpack. Yeah, that's all seems straightforward. Yes, 100K is fine. Um, dev tool eval cheap model. Um, are we using cheap model source map? I think that's the one we use, right? Um, that's not what we want. Serve uh, cheap source map. Let's try cheap model source map and um, let's try running that. So, and see how much that will decrease the size. I mean, the source maps is, um, I guess they should be actually in, in a separate file, right? Because then. Uh, are we actually is it generating files here or yes it is generating files 78 bytes now that doesn't seem correct oh wait that, that's a css map uh okay so the source maps are now integrated so what we're gonna do wait a second a pack dev tool um i remember there was a way to basically generate the source maps as a separate file um dev tool Ta 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 eval source map. Um, where's the that actually seems like a very old docs to me, actually. Um, yes, 2o documentation. There we go, that's a new one. Uh, documentation and um, d -d 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 dev tool. That's what I want to see. Um, ba -ba -bam, production ready, cheap source map, cheap source map model, source map, um, rebuild builds. I mean, the thing is that we don't really care about build and rebuild speeds, right? Uh, to original source without source content. Um, I guess we can try just using source map because I mean, if we use the source map, then unless you have opened the dev tools, the source map will not be fetched, right? So that will save you a lot of kilobytes, especially considering that um, it might be like, uh, I mean, it includes the original sources, right? So it's, it's like, it's a lot of, a lot of stuff. Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, I am a bit confused. Okay, so that doesn't seem to be 
decreasing the size. I guess it generates it separately as well. Um, dist, can we have a look at the dist? I don't really see a, um, okay, that, that's a bit weird. Source mapping, yeah, speed, yeah, I mean, we don't really care about speed right now, but for production, source map, full source map is emitted as a separate file. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. I don't really see it. Uh, we're running in production, right? I did snowed in production, yes. And uh, we have that. Is it because I am doing this middleware? Oh, I think I know why. So we don't really need the middleware um, for production, right? So this should only be applied. This should only be applied in development. Uh, what we do want to do in production is actually compile it manually. So uh, else, there we go. And then uh, now I have to remember how the compiler API works. Du -du 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 -du. Performance stats, other options. Uh, configuration API. There we go. That's what I want. Um, so can you please go away to um, okay. Oh, they don't have introduction. Okay, they, at least the API is there. That's a good thing. Uh, Webpack configuration objects, error stats, um, run. Yeah, there you go. That's what we want to do. Uh, so we want to say compiler run. And I think there was a way to provide stats config somehow. Oh, error stats. Okay, we got then error stats. Um, so if we get error, then uh, console error. Okay, error compiling uh, web pack uh, with web. let's put it more explicit, right? It's always good. And then process exit one, so non zero code. Um, that's, I mean, you really need a return here, so whatever. Uh, and then in this case, if the stats, I think it was a utility to show stats, um, stats to J. Yeah, there you go. Stats to Jason. So console, uh, console log. I think, I mean, not to Jason, but it's stats to string. There you go. That's what we want. Stats to string, uh, stats conf, right? So we use the same config. Okay. And then theoretically, okay. And um, I think, no, I think that should be fine. We're using the dist folder here as well. Yes. Okay, good. So if I restart it now, it should theoretically generate the stuff into the dist folder. And this time around, we should actually see the, um, um, what do you call it? The source map file. Come on. There we go. And uh, admin, okay, it doesn't, does it does it just not shows it in the um, uh, code? Is that a thing? So dist l, yeah, there you go. Okay, so it is there. Um, Three point six megabyte. Yeah, that's that's quite a file. All right, uh, that works. So and uh, theoretically, if I go here, yeah. So now we're serving pure static files, which should be way easier to cache using, uh, say, nginx front end. Right. Okay, good. We did that. Um, da, 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 da. We're good here, I think. Uh, let me see what else. Uh, let's have a look here at the optimizations. Node environment. Yeah, we did that, I believe. Do we have defined plugin here, right? Yeah, by the way, we have defined plugin, so it's, it's good. Uh, production. By the way, this production is required for uh, React.js because by default it assumes development environment. And unless you do that, it inserts development related things in it, like warnings and all that kind of stuff. And if you provide the production environment flag, it really decreases size a lot by removing this um, development things. Okay, this all is good. Let's see this article. Anything new here? Um, that doesn't seem to be so loaders. Yeah, that's all boring. Of dependencies is also boring. Do, 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 do. Extract text. Okay, this is the CSS. We already did that. That doesn't seem so. Okay, I mean, it makes me a bit sad that there's no um, improvements list or no new techniques to actually uh, minimize the size of it. But I guess, you know, uh, so there's always a limit you can hit. Okay. Um, yeah, that look that looks good. Okay, fine.
Okay, git status, git. Um, so we did what? We did static compilation. Um, compile to files when. Compile source to files um, when running in production mode, right? Okay. Now, um, what do we want? Um, yeah, okay, this is all fine. So there's no uh, new things there. Uh, what we want is we have everything ready. Kind of okay, right? So it works. I mean, 700k is a large bundle, but you know, we're not we don't really care much about it right now. So I'm sure there's a way to optimize it like, um, again, not requiring the whole RxJS, but actually taking the uh, store and just looking at what um, which functions we actually use in ethics and only requiring those so this will obviously decrease the size but we can do it later so that sounds like a refactoring work right so what we actually need to do now is um to add docker file right so let's see um i don't remember which which docker file did we use in the server side was it just node.js here i think it was just uh no i need docker file yeah so let's, let's just take this uh, we'll take node. So we uh, create a folder, copy package JSON. We're actually using yarn now. So let's, I mean, I've been using, there's a nice uh, yarn uh, Docker image, which is, uh, if you don't know, the yarn is no longer uh, recommended to be installed from NPM. So you can really do NPM minus G install yarn. Um, you now have to do um, like app get install whatever. So basically install it with your um, uh, package manager. Okay, and we have this 7476. Okay, which is the latest one? Uh, latest is I okay, it's just node latest. So it seems perfect. So well, I've been using this this image uh, for most of my projects that run on yarn and it seems to be working just fine. So this is what I'm going to do. Um, copy and we're going to copy yarn lock and then we're going to run yarn, right? So this is what we want to do. And I think I am going to do the same for um, for server, right? Because there's no point in, in not running yarn. Uh, let me decrease the size of it. Um, there's no point in not running yarn since it's like way faster and more efficient. So you know, do that. Uh, let's actually specify that we want the latest explicitly because why not? Um, Ta -da -ta, there we go. And uh, in this case, copy yarn lock. Um, did I forget? Did I forget? Yes, I forgot to do this, right? So um, this is what we want. Uh, okay, so this builds, yeah, that looks good. Da -da -dum. Okay, in this case, we don't really need to precompile anything, we just say npm start right uh, okay yeah that that looks good so we can um dun, 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 let me think we can first try to build it locally uh bp let's call it bpgs clients and uh let's actually you know what docker build minus t bpjs server let's try to build the server as well Okay, and I mean, I can run the cloud uh, no, 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 okay, that's, that's a bad idea. So we need a docker ignore file. And uh, we need to put here what we need to put here VS code, we need to ignore coverage, coverage, we need to ignore dist node modules, and I think and git, right. So that's, that's, that's what we don't want to include. Um, LA, uh, what else do we have? We don't really, oh, there's no git folder, but let's just ignore it just in case. Okay, docker builds clients. There you go, 376K, that seems about right. Okay, uh, yeah, FS events, that's fine. So that should take a few seconds. But basically, once that is built, we can actually what we can do is we can, um, first of all, we can create a docker compose file that will uh, unfold the whole platform for us with ease 
And second of all, we can, um, yeah, we can uh, tweak the GitLab CI file to actually build the stuff for us, right? Because right now it only builds the backend. Okay, there we go. Now, um, mm -hmm. looks good. Okay, so now we can run. Um, so I'm gonna run it in interactive mode uh, with auto removal. Um, we are running BPJS uh, server and uh, I'm gonna link it with, um, man, if I would remember how I named it. Uh, experts DB, okay, so experts DB, we link it as experts DB and then I'm gonna pass the environmental variable URI which will be experts db right uh no wait that's i need to forward ports and in this case we're running on 8080 if i remember correctly yes okay so uh the host yeah i mean why not let's let's just run it on the same port so it's going to be 8080 to 8080 and theoretically that should work there we go so it's connected to db it looks good okay cool now we need to run clients run minus it rm um, minus p so do we need actually any environmental variables over here in the client i don't think so right we don't really specify anything um the only question is where the hell does it takes as they all highlighted no no oh yeah okay um blah, 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 blah. let me think store um, is it in the epics, right? So we're using we're using localhost here. Okay, so that that's not gonna work, right? But that's that's uh, I mean, theory it's gonna work for now because we're using um, there you go because we're using the localhost. We, we because we bind the ports that is gonna work just fine. But once we start deploying it somewhere, that's obviously gonna break, right? Because we are not um, requesting localhost. So what we actually want to do um, is find all the localhost mentions um, in is there advanced search here files to include GS that's what I want yeah um, okay files to exclude uh, min JS please not yeah there you go cool um, yeah so there's a, there's a bunch of them okay test and uh, we don't need test as well right so JS, so we only care about so there's both questions and users will obviously make sense okay uh, so if I go to localhost login that seems to be working if I try to run test it should reject it unauthorized so both backend and frontend are working um, yeah okay obviously I'm not running it in the production mode so because I didn't provide the environmental variable for it so as you can see the bundle size is quite large okay good that is working so um now with what we need to do is first of all get add docker file and docker ignore over here uh git commit uh, and i'm gonna commit it as add docker file for client right and then um you know what i'm gonna ignore vs code because they just annoy me at git ignore um, git commit ignore vs code folders and then um, um, yeah okay so git um, change uh, no change uh, server docker file to um, use yarn based node image there you go okay cool um okay and that thing doesn't want to exit um docker kill gift gifted good all that's that's a interesting name there we go okay now it's done um so what we need to do now is uh let me think so basically the problem is we need a config file here right 
So let me open all of those files. One, two, three. I think that should be all of them, right? Because everything else doesn't really do any requests. So, and we need a config file that would actually, um, I guess we could use the define plugin. So um, let's see, webpack define. Um, I guess we can just have a look at what was it, webpack.js org, right? Uh, to, 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 guides, uh, no, not guides. We need the define plugin thing. Um, where do I find them? There's a search, define. Define plugin. Uh, no, that is, that, that's not correct. Oh, yeah, define plugin. There we go. Okay, so yeah, um, so we're gonna define, um, say, API host, right? And uh, do it in this way. So this is gonna be the API host, and we're gonna say process and, uh, so it's gonna be, I think it's it needs to be JSON stringify process and API host. Or we're gonna, whoops, we're gonna say that it's, whoops, uh, yeah, there you go. Or it's gonna be localhost by default, localhost 8080, so that we don't break the old, um, the old code, right? So that we can run it in the same way. Okay, and I think now, yeah, in the code, we can just use this API hosting, which means we actually have to say uh, globals host true there we go um yeah that's json there you go all right so which means in here uh, we can do it like this but so we just use our api host variable instead of the host have to know that it should not end with a trailing um slash i'm not i i didn't end it with a trailing slash did i yes okay good Right, and um, you know what? Can we just do it like this? Okay, uh, ring two, and then I just need to fix the. Okay, that's that's already uses the template strings. This already uses template strings. It's right, perfect. Okay, um, users, there you go. Okay, this also uses template string, so we can just do it like this, right? Right, npm test, just to make sure we didn't actually break anything. Uh, but wait a second, I think it's gonna break because we don't specify the API, or do we specify the API host? Yeah, okay, API host is that, yeah, okay. So in test, it won't be, uh, won't be defined, so we need to tweak the tests a bit. Um, let's let's do, 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 do. Oh, set up um, default API host. So global, I think, or do we need to define it for the window? Let's see, eighty eight, eighty eighty. There you go. Let's run a test. There we go. So now it works. Okay, cool. All tests are passing just fine. Great. Uh, so and now before I actually commit that, let's uh, just test it. Clients, there we go. So as you can see, you know, since we didn't change the package or yarn JS or yarn log, sorry, uh, the rebuilding itself takes like literally seconds because it's just copying the files because all the node models and everything is already cached. Um, right, so this is our server, and then docker run, there we go. Um, so, but in this case, we wanna do e, what was the, I've already forgot, API host, uh, equals, um, let's, let's try, I just, just to check that it basically actually works, I think I'm gonna take it like this, right? So, there we go. And uh, what we're gonna, what we should see here. So if I refresh it, um, okay, that's gonna take some time. Come on, there we go. Okay, 
So if I am gonna send now some request, we should theoretically see Docker dev. There we go. Cool. So by the way, Docker dev is what I use uh, with my local DNS. So I have dot dev uh, resolve like any subdomain resolve to localhost to what one two seven zero zero one basically so that i can have separate domains to just check that course works and stuff like this but you know in this case you see that server does respond and it actually changed the um, api too so that's good okay uh, that thing doesn't want to stop again um uh, doc, no docker um, docker ps may say docker kill eloquent murdoch okay eloquent murdoch it is um so let's see what it would do. We audit, yeah, okay, cool. Actually, let's try to find, uh, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open Sublime Source and then I'm gonna search here for localhost. Just to be sure, no, wait, did I just, yeah, no, not unlock TXT search everywhere. Uh, okay, so this is tests, tests are, fine. okay, only in tests. So that seems good. Um, Git commit um, add way to override uh, default um, API host. That's what we did. Okay, uh, we have Docker file. We have host over overriding. Now, okay, we don't need that anymore. So what we want is we don't need that anymore. We we want to go um, here and tweak the GitLab thing, right? So we got build and test stages and we got release stage. So we got build server and in parallel, we wanna run um, build client. Um, pum, pum, pum. So server uh, in this case, uh, it's gonna be client test image, um, client. <laughs> And the same goes for um, client. Um, I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, we could just we could just do it. Now, yeah, I guess it's it's just format it. Yeah, coherently like this, right? So client. There we go. So we're logging into Docker Hub. Um, first of all, let me check. Um, yeah, we don't need any of that anymore. Uh, we do need GitLab here. We don't need this anymore, so sign in. Uh, where's my, come on. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, go away, last pass. I don't care about you right now. Uh, create a repository. So we are gonna create uh, our client repository here. Um, yes, there we go. Um, you know what, I'm too lazy, so I'm just gonna go ahead to the server and copy the description from here. Example, client image, and um, yeah, for now we can leave the description empty. Cool, so now we have the image of the rep already. So we built server, we built client, uh, client test image, client test image, right? Okay, now here's the question. Uh, will the client, so we need test client now. Test client, the question is, I mean, theoretically it should, okay, we don't need rethink to be in this case. Client test image, uh, we don't need this link here. So in this case, it should theoretically be way easier. Um, Okay, Docker images, um, blah, 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 I have way too many, oh God. Okay, we have this BPJS client, so Docker, yeah, Docker run um, MPM test, that theoretically that should work, right? So we don't really need any external things for it to uh, actually function properly. I uh, know it, what? Okay, that is a lot of errors and most of them are related to registration. Wow. Hey. Snapshot received. Why is there one hour difference? 
Is that because of the way the Docker t time in Docker is different? I am. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, there you go. So it's GM GMT zero. And now the question is, okay, how the hell do we solve this? Um, is there a way to set Docker container time zone? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit, yes, that's a, that's a good point. Um, run echo. Yeah, that seems. I mean, we need to enforce the time zone at least during tests, right? Because they're all uh, the the snapshots were generated during um, the Berlin time zone, which I am in. Um, base image. Do this. Yeah, okay, so if you links the config, well, I don't, don't care much about linking. Can we just do that? Europe, Berlin, I guess. Let's try that. Uh, Berlin, I hope that actually works because if, if that solves that, that would be really cool. <laughs> It looks like it does. Nice. That's actually that's perfect solution. So in this case, we want to say uh, minus E Berlin, right? And that's all we need to do. Ta da. Great. So the tests pass and then we need to do release um, client. Client, there we go. Docker pool client test image. Uh, we tag it with client release and we push the client release. So this is gonna give us the client build, right? So um, git status, git commit, um, use GitLab, GitLab CI to build client image, client Docker image. Let's be more explicit. So I'm going to push it right now. And then I'm going to force the sync in here. So that we can while I'm doing the other stuff, we can actually see if um, the build succeeds, right? Okay. So it's gonna take a few seconds. Um, I think that should be already here, right? Yeah, there we go. So that looks updated. Yeah, that looks that looks good. Right, so that's now should come on. Synchronize. Updating. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, while we are waiting for that stuff to happen, let's talk about the deployment specifically, right? So we want to deploy it on some server. And uh, I mean, you know, there's there's a bunch of ways to deploy. For example, there is uh now if you haven't seen it it's it's a uh, company co-founded by Guillermo Rausch and it's it's really cool it, it allows you to deploy things in seconds literally it's really great but it's it's um not really the hardware like not really the you know the dedicated server so we, we're not gonna go the easy way unless if you are interested let me know maybe I can also cover it separately uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to deploy it on my um, one of my servers. So um, as you can see here, we have um, a bunch of things running um, on this server. So this includes my um, some demos that I run and my own uh, website and, uh, you know, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'm using the uh, JVilar Nginx proxy here. So let me show you that thing. The idea behind it is very simple. So it's an automated proxy for Docker containers. Uh, the thing is that you run this uh, Nginx as a front end. So basically whatever request comes goes through it. And then when you run your container, all you have to do is say that the virtual host is something. And then obviously you have to point your DNS towards it, right? 
Um, so in this case, I, as you can see here, I have a proxy along with Let's Encrypt. So for example, if you go to my website, you will see that it's actually, um, come on, no, no, I want to click on it while you drag it, stupid. There we go. Okay, so as you can see here, you know, it's, it's actually secure and um, um, no, wait, that's not how you look. Uh, so basically, that's let's, let's encrypt. It's, it's encry <laughs> just believe me, if you want to go dig through certificates, it should be fine. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a make file, I guess, uh, that would uh, run the whole system and uh, then just during the rebuilds, it will pull the new versions of, so it's basically going to be um, another step. So let's see. So we're going to release and I'm going to tap deploy here, right? And then um, deploy step is going to be um, stage deploy. It's going to be executed only on master, obviously, because we don't want to deploy um, specifically any uh, broken things. And I think there was, okay, so this thing is now running. We actually should see a nice um, pipeline diagram now. Yeah, there you go. See that? That looks great. Okay, I think we actually might want to tweak some things a bit. Uh, so GitLab uh, CI Ta -da -da. YAML reference is what I want. Reference. Uh, yeah, there we go. I think that should contain it, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Um, allow failure when. When on failure, no. When manual, no. That's not what we want. Only an accept. Only triggers. There was a way to say basically only do it um, when no script fail. When on success. That was it when? Yeah, I think it's basically. So that's what we want to say, right? And then in this case, script. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, so it looks like exactly we don't want it to run it in failure. Good job. And when all jobs from previous stages succeeded. Yeah, like, oh, okay, it's default. So we don't really need to say that. Cool. That That's great. Right. So um, what we want to do in this case is we want to SSH. Um, um, no, was it? I don't remember. So basically, the uh, the thing is, is that I um, took the I generated a special certificate for um, new private key for my server, and I put it in here so that actually when we uh, use it. But I actually, you know, what we actually need to add it, right? So. This is the very naive way of doing it. Let's put it this way. So if you like running uh, your own servers, you would normally do a bit more sophisticated things. But that um, no, wasn't here. It was, I think it was Xenize Web or something. Yeah, I think it was this one. Let me see. Uh, so yeah, this is like very uh, naive and stupid way of doing this, but you know, it works. So I'm going to copy this thing. Um, there you go. So we need this before script actually. And uh, in the, I think we can only run it for deploy, right? Um, stage deploy only master. So before script, um, yeah, there you go. So, uh, and I, uh, yeah, in this case, I guess we can also say that the image I don't, I'm using, I think Docker latest should work. So we install the OpenSSH, we run the SSH agent, then we um, save our private key as an IDRSA, which modded and added to agent. Then we create the dir, um, the SSH folder, and um, fix the um, Docker executor warnings. So basically, Again, you know, this is warning, uh, you are susceptible to man in the middle attacks if you do that. So it should be unique SSH key. And ideally, you should use uh, your own private uh, CI runners for that. But you know, again, this is, you know, this is a naive way, this is a very stupid way of doing things. 
Uh, and uh, it, if if we're talking about something uh, as you know as is a demo server, for example, as mine, I don't care if something happens to it. So this way is absolutely fine for me. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna say bpjs deploy and then make deploy, right? So uh, what we are also needing here, let's create a folder called deploy and uh, create a make file in it. So uh, in this case, I think the make file here is very stupid. So as you can see here, it's very straightforward, but um, I guess, okay, first of all, we don't need this environment because we're only going to be running it remotely. I wouldn't need the build step, we need a pull step, right? So um, it's going to be pull. And in this case, we are going to pull our, um, okay, we don't need jwilder here anymore. We don't need that anymore. Okay, this thing is still testing, no building, I guess. Okay, yeah. So we are gonna be pulling um, things from hub, right? So they are public. So in this case, I don't care about authentication or anything. Um, where are my images? Come on, thing uh, one, two. So I'm gonna copy this part here uh, and then Docker pull um, server. So we pull the server, we pull the client. Let's just do the latest to make sure we actually pull whatever is just pushed. Now, then we are gonna clean um, by stopping and removing the um, old versions vgs uh, server so and client and then i'm gonna remove server and client and then we're gonna start both of them right so we want to start as daemon we are gonna say bp vgs um, server so uh, this adds it to the nginx network which uh, I started using the Docker Compose. So if you use Docker Compose, Docker Compose will generate a separate network for every set of containers you start. In this case, because Nginx need to access all other containers, you actually have to be on one network with it. So, and um, um, in this case, uh, I'm gonna do, uh, let's, I guess let's do this. Uh, and in this case, I'm just gonna use .com because there um, only has to be one uh, one endpoint, right? Because we have to hard code that uh, into the client side. Okay, so we run the uh, minus D. We first run the server. Um, I guess I can just copy the whole thing from here. And then we run cl client, uh, the same here. So I'm gonna remove, I actually, why am I doing the XNICE thing? This should not be XNICE, should be my server, right? Uh, and it's not com, I believe it's .net. I'll have to check that later on. I don't remember if those are actually correct. Um, uh, if, I, if I actually map my DNS to the, um, to match all subdomains. Okay, and uh, in this case, so first of all, okay, we need another thing. So we need, first of all, we need DB. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, where's our util thing, DB create. So we're gonna grab that command and uh, say Docker run. Uh, we don't need to map any ports in this case, right? So because, um, it's going to be all internal, but we do need to map the um, data folder so that our uh, database is persistent. BPVGS uh, experts DB. Oh, let's just call it BPVGS DB, right? Uh, it's going to be everything DB, right? Good. So we're on that. Uh, and first of all, we have to link. Um, so bpvgs db as db and in this case we gonna say that uh, db uri so we're gonna give it another environmental variable it's gonna say db right 
not to forget to break the lines correctly. Okay, we did that. Um, I did that. I think that's basically all we need for the back end. And then for the front end, uh, we need to specify uh, API host, right? Uh, so this is going to be minus E API host and it's going to be HTTPS because we're running behind the uh, Let's encrypt. BPVG. Uh, let, me, let me just copy that. <laughs> let me just copy that. There we go. Okay, theoretically, that should be absolutely enough. So basically, we will have to do uh, make DB uh, first when we put this file onto our server, which I mean, I guess we can do it now. Um, so and then uh, what was it? BPGS deploy. Um, let's let's BP, let's make it consistent and uh, use the BPWGS everywhere. So and um, I'm just I'm gonna be lazy and uh, I'm gonna be copy pasting this I mean normally I would um, uh, actually just clone the repository that I what the hell no that's not what I wanted to do why did it lose all the formatting no 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 okay uh, is that some plugin in the uh, hyper term interfering let me try doing that here um yeah okay here we go vim make file insert yeah there you go okay so i guess there's some plugin that messes up my um um tab instead of eight space uh did it just converted everything to spaces oh god no why that is slightly annoying um, to put it to say the least, basically, um, yeah. Okay, I mean, no, you know what? I, I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, rm make file. Um, let's do it properly. So, um, I term kill. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so um, what we can do is actually just SCP it into there, right? Um, let me think, SCP deploy make file into root at cosign.net, um, root, uh, let's go here, there we go. So this is where we want to SCP it and then it should I mean, it cannot be messed up, right? Let's check. There we go. Finally. Ta-da. Okay. Um, I actually think, yeah, because we're running it on different networks. Um, so let's do it this way. We should also use the same network for our database otherwise they won't be able to link to each other um maybe just yeah, yeah, please stop that um remove that so let's kill the data um let's copy that once again i think that should be the last one um boom, 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 boom. Uh, no um, cut make file as well once and uh let's check yep that looks good make db um uh, whoops i say dogger logs bpvjs db yeah that's that looks good uh okay it has the old version so let's um I think yeah, I've, I've been running uh, everything to be on this server before, so you know what? Um, Docker pull everything to be uh, latest. Let's just pull the last version just to be sure. Make DB. Okay, so now we have the DB. Let's check our pipeline here. Okay, the build test for server is finished. Test for client is still running. Um, what? The, wait a second. What? 
Am I uh, pulling client? Yes. Yes, then no, no, wait a sec. That that's a server. Did I screwed up the GitLab CI file? Um, test client, client, build client. Oh, God, God damn it. Of course. Um, so yeah, I mean, theoretically, right. I'm, 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 um, so I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say manually here. Was it manually? I think, um, when manual, okay. Um, uh, t -t 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 get status, get add some fix issue with client building in CI, add deploy files, uh, step and files. Okay, I'm gonna push that. Uh, obviously, uh, we actually need to kill that, yeah, cancel, that's not gonna work. So this pipeline is now uh, canceled. Perfect. So we we'll push the data here. Um, I guess I'm going to leave it at manual uh, because in this case, I actually don't want it to be deployed on every um, every commit because, you know, I, I like my server is very cheap and it's not very powerful. So that's not something I want to do. Um, let's go to mirror repository and update it. So I'm going to just leave it a manual. And basically once the build is finished, there will be a button that will be, um, there we go. Okay. It synced way faster this time. Um, so let's see the pipeline itself. I think there should be a button on deploy, um, after. I'm, I'm not sure how the manual step looks actually. So we're going to check it out. Right, and uh, I think that's actually it. So if all of that works, and if I didn't screw up anywhere, we have a full pipeline, which basically deploys it to live. So um, try to remember where I had my, let me try to have a look at my domains. I think it was at the Gandhi or something. Um, uh, yeah, okay, you want my password. No. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, two factor authentication, of course. See, auth uh, and my token, 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 token. Where's my token? I don't know. Come on thing. I know this Kickstarter. There we go. Okay, while it's building, I'm just gonna make sure that uh, my domain actually points to the uh, all subdomains. Uh, zone files change. Uh, no, that's the Yes, this is what I want. And uh, yes, okay, cool. So it should theoretically, once the whole deployment is up, it should be uh, working just fine. But okay, I think, you know, it's a, I, I don't really want to wait for the whole thing to build because it will take some time. Uh, I guess we can uh, wrap the whole thing up uh, here. And, uh, you know, once the pipeline finishes, you should theoretically see um, um, codezen.net, I think you should theoretically see everything over here right now. It's obviously 503 because there's no domain like this. But uh, yeah, so in theory, that should be working. So yeah, that's that's wrap it up here. Thank you for watching. And as usual, see you next time. Bye.